After several days alone on the island, I've almost had enough. I'm looking forward to lying on a proper mattress on board ship. We continue northward to see if the increased temperatures have melted so much ice that we can completely circumnavigate the Svalbard archipelago. Polar bears, more than any other species, are the ones who are already seriously feeling the effects of higher temperatures. Their hunting grounds have literally melted beneath their feet. Perhaps so much of the ice will disappear that in the foreseeable future it will be possible to sail all the way to the North Pole. Arriving in the northern reaches of Svalbard is a fantastic experience. They look as things ought to have looked much further south. This is the environment most of Svalbard wildlife is adapted to live in. And this is where you may meet a polar bear living the way polar bears are meant to live. We've now reached 80 degrees latitude. That's much further north than you can usually get to by ship. The area is so free of ice that we now know for certain that we can sail all the way around Svalbard and document the trip for the first time on video. It's frightening because it means that the warmer climate is setting the agenda. I think of all the hungry polar bears I saw on my trek. There will be many more of them in the future. Last year, the captain also managed to circumnavigate the archipelago and it worried him that so much ice had melted. This year, he wants to see if even more ice has melted since last he was here. Before we round the northernmost tip of Svalbard, he heads north. He wants to see how far the ship can sail. Let's hope we're soon stopped by pack ice. I grow more and more concerned the farther north we sail. Things are worse than I'd feared. The ice is not solid anymore, and the ship's able to sail even farther north than last year without any trouble. When we reach 82 degrees latitude, the ice is so thick and dense that we can venture no further. There only remain around 900 kilometers.